Okay, in this video we're going to start talking about sequences and they usually always do sequences and series together. There's definitely um, you know, a tie between the two. And to begin with, a sequence is basically just a listing of numbers. So, you know, I could have a very simple sequence, one, two, three, four, etc. So that is certainly an example of a sequence. An example of another sequence would be 1.1.01.001.001 and just assume this pattern continues. So the thing that you're going to want to ask yourself about sequences, typically the question is, is the sequence what they call converge? Does it converge? If I can speak proper English here. Um, and notice in this case, one, two, three, four. Well, obviously the numbers are going to keep getting bigger and bigger. So this sequence is just going to go off to infinity. And we would say that this sequence diverges. Um, this next sequence, obviously it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and it looks like the numbers are simply approaching zero in this case, and we would say that this sequence converges. And again, sequences and series tie together, so I hope I don't accidentally say series instead of sequences on this, on this example. So um, there should be nothing about series in this video, so if I do say series, excuse me, um, just I should be saying sequences, just a little, little heads up. Typically what they'll do is they'll give you a formula. So for example, maybe we have the formula a sub n, and what's a good little example here? Maybe I'll make it 3 times negative 1 to the n power over n factorial. And now we have a nice little compact formula for what the a sub n terms are. The first term in your sequence is what is denoted as a sub 1. So in this sequence, 1 would be a sub 1, 2 would be a sub 2, 3 would be a sub 3, etc. And in my second sequence, 1 would be a sub, my a sub 1 term, point 0.1 would be my a sub 2 term, point zero 0.01 would be my a sub 3 term, etc. And in this case, let's just write out a couple terms, maybe the first three terms. So the first three terms, well, I'll have a sub 1, I'll have to calculate a sub 2, and then I'll also have to calculate a sub 3. So all you do is you just replace n with the the term that you want. Okay, so a sub 1, well, it says I'll get 3 times negative 1 to the first over 1 factorial. Negative 1 to the first is just negative 1. I'll have 3 times negative 1, which will be negative 3, over 1, which is negative 3. And in case you've forgotten about factorials, maybe as an example. 5 factorial, remember that's just notation. What that means is you start at this number and you keep multiplying it by numbers that are one smaller than itself and you keep decreasing. So 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, shorthand for that. Likewise, 10 factorial would be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Um, so factorials get really big really fast because you're multiplying all these numbers together. And typically when you do sequences and series, you will run into some factorials. Okay, so all we have to do in this example is just again keep plugging in our numbers. So for a sub 2, we'll have 3 over negative 1 squared over 2 factorial. Well, negative 1 squared is positive 1 times 3 is 3. 2 factorial, again, that's just 2 times 1, so I'll be left with 3 halves. 
and in our last example we'll have 3 times negative 1 raised to the third power over 3 factorial well that's 3 excuse me negative 3 because the negative 1 cubed will be a negative over 3 times 2 times 1 well the 3's could cancel out and in this case you would be left with negative 1 half so these would be our first three terms of the sequence gotta think every time make sure I don't say series in general again the question is going to be for a particular series does this ah, see I already said it for a particular sequence does the sequence converge or diverge and you know in this case it looks like well if you think about it it looks like the numbers are getting smaller so eh, maybe they're getting closer to zero but you'll want a, a more you know algebraic way or calculus based way to justify that that sequence does in fact converge and typically what you'll do for these is you'll just end up doing limits so let's do a couple examples here of sequences showing they converge or diverge and again this is certainly not going to cover every case ever that's out there but it is you know the basic idea on what you'll do on these problems so converge or diverge that's what we'll be trying to figure out here so in my first example suppose I have the sequence defined by a sub n equals n times n minus 1. And a good idea, you know, in general, if you just have no feeling whatso whatsoever about what's going on in the sequence, start plugging in numbers. Plug in 1, see what you get out. Plug in 2, see what you get out. Plug in 3, see what you get out. And that'll give you some more intuition on what's going on. Um, and this is something, you know, the best mathematicians in the world do, you know obviously they're probably not doing these sequences and series problems but you you take some very simple examples to give yourself an idea of what's going on again in general with these problems which what you'll do to justify them so again n's going to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger a sub 1 a sub 2 a sub 3 a sub 4 a sub 5 so the n's are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger well, we denote that by saying we want to look at n getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So we look at the limit as n goes to infinity of our sequence. And in this case, notice as n goes to infinity, well, n is going to go to infinity. n minus 1 is also going to go to infinity. So the whole thing will go off to infinity. And we would say that this particular sequence diverges. And again, I think if you started plugging in numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you would see that the numbers you're getting out are, in fact, just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Let's look at another one here. How about the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 to the n over 3 to the n plus 1? And in this particular sequence, I'm going to rewrite it. And the thing I notice, you know, just kind of intuitively, well, the number being raised to the variable power in the denominator, 3 is bigger than 2. As I start raising that to powers, you know, 3 cubed is bigger than 2 cubed. I guess I actually should bump it up even by 1 extra. But the idea to me is the denominator is going to be getting much bigger much faster than the numerator even though the top's going to go to infinity and the bottom is going to go to infinity so to calculate this limit you could in fact use L'Hopital's rule this is infinity over infinity but I'm just going to rewrite it a little bit notice I have 3 to the n plus 1 I can write that as 3 to the first times 3 to the n right I have like bases if I add the exponent, I'll get n plus 1 back. And I'm going to pull this divided by 3, or 1 third, out front. Then I have the limit as n goes to infinity. And I'm going to rewrite 2 to the n over 3 to the n as 2 thirds raised to the n. 
and there's a result with sequences I'm not going to write it down in this case but it basically says if you have a number being raised to a power it says this limit will converge if this number inside so if this generic number inside in this case the number being two-thirds if that number is between positive one and negative one I should be more specific if it's strictly greater than negative one and less than or equal to positive one well two-thirds certainly falls inside of this interval so it turns out that this limit in fact equals zero for this particular case so I'll be left with one-third times zero or one-third and again that kind of confirms with my my intuition the bottoms getting much bigger than or excuse me the bottoms getting much bigger much faster than the numerator and that should end up giving me zero even though I wrote one-third I can't do my arithmetic here so maybe let's do one more here real quick let's do one actually I'm gonna stop this and I'm going to do another video with a couple more examples on sequences, so feel free to check that out.